Hey guys, and welcome to this episode in the Enemy Logic series. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how we can animate our enemies while they're going through their state machine so that the game actually starts looking like a real game. Do you want to learn how to design and make games? Or maybe you just want to learn more about Godot? Then subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on anything. Also, if you're curious about the game development projects that I do myself, I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The link, descriptions and all the schedules are down in that description box below. Now let's get started. Now in the last episode, we got to the point that our enemies are firing at us whenever they see us and they follow us around. But when they follow us around, they're not showing any walking animations. And also when they're firing their projectiles, they're not any showing any sort of uh, animations that our player is doing when he's firing his projectiles. So that's what we're going to be working on today to get these animations up to par with the animations we currently got on our player character. Now in order to get started with these animations, we first need a couple of animations. And we're in luck here because the um, enemy characters and the player character are actually of the same sprite sheet setup. So in George, his uh, scene, we have an instance animation player which already has all of our animations. If you want to learn how to do this, then make sure you watch the video that I'll put on the top right now as that will get, take you through how to set up these animations. Now let's get started on making George move. So we're right here on George his scene and in the code of George we're going to first be defining three variables that we've also got on our player character that run the animation loop partially. So we got the animation direction which is the direction that the character or in this case the enemy should be facing. Now some game developers like to use top down left right I prefer to use the wind directions of south north west east etc. Then we have the animation mode, which is going to be idle, deaf, um, attacking or walking. And that animation is now idle underscore southwest that's being built up by the previous two animations. So these two variables basically are going to be um, congregated into this variable that will then be pushed towards the uh, animation player. Now right here under the ready function previously, we have simply called the animation player and set it to play idle southwest hard coded. We can remove this now as we no longer need this. We're gonna put this in an animation loop. And we start calling that from the process function. We're just gonna continue rolling that uh, continuously over in the process. So every frame this animation loop is playing. In other words, it's continuous. So we call the animation loop, which of course is a function that doesn't exist yet. But that's what this tutorial is about, to make sure that that function becomes functional. Now to make this functional, I'm gonna copy and paste the most basic part out of the player movement. And that is that the animation loop is first gonna be congregating the animation mode and animation direction with an underscore, and it's gonna be pushing that animation to the animation player. Now, of course, the whole point of this tutorial is to make sure that we set the animation mode and direction continuously, either within the state machine or within the functions that the state machine calls, so that the animation is constantly updating appropriately with what the enemies are doing. So for example, here on the search function, when the uh, enemy starts moving, we can say, okay, whenever we move, we're calling the move and slide function. So we can say that right here, the animation mode is going to be walk. And whenever we put George back into his resting position, right here, if the path to the destination, the size is zero, in other words, if there's no more points to move to, we refer or we put the enemy back into his resting mode. It also means that we can put its animation mode back into idle. That way, we should see some character movement right now. So we're gonna be walking up to George and see if they start Oh, as you can see, we got a, a movement animation right now, but the movement animation is not yet in the direction that we need it to be. As we have not set the animation direction yet, we've only set the animation mode. So let's start working on the animation direction. So to get that direction out of our game, out of our code, we first have to define a new variable on the top here. That's what I've done already here with the move direction. And I set that to 135. You can use any uh, number between zero and 180. It doesn't really matter as long as the code has something for the first frame as else it might run into an error. Um, 
now that, that we have that move direction, we can define it. So when we set that animation mode to walk in the search function, just before we call that move and slide uh, command, we're going to say that the move direction is the angle between the current position, because we're running this on the enemy uh, script, to the first indice or the first index of the path to destination array being a vector 2. Now I divide that by the number pi 3.14 and multiply by 180 because I prefer to work in degrees instead of uh, radials. So yeah, that's a preference of, uh, of my side. Now once, once we have this, we know what degrees the character is moving towards. And with that input, we can determine whether that's going to be northwest, southeast, northwest, whatever. So let's do that next. Now, all the way on the bottom of the script of George in our animation loop, we're going to be adding a if function that's going to uh, determine what uh, between which degrees our move direction actually is. So, for example, if it's between 15 degrees and minus 15 degrees, we know we're walking east. And for that, we've set all the animation directions with their appropriate degrees, and we put uh, or we set the animation direction based on that uh, on that output. Now that animation direction, of course, then becomes input to create the animation, which is pushed into the animation player. Now we can quickly test that out to see if now George is walking in the right direction towards us if we move away from them. And as you can see right now, George is moving in that direction um, along the path of where it needs to be going. Now this isn't, as you can see, perfect yet because now they keep walking while they're shooting and that's because we have not created a shooting animation yet to properly filter that out. So let's work on that next. Now in order to make sure that we get that shooting animation in the proper direction and to make sure it doesn't interfere with the walking sequence, we're going to be upgrading this animation loop to have an else uh, or if else if statement. Now first to make sure we do that correctly, we have to set the shooting animation. So here in the attack function, we can say that as soon as the attack function starts, we want the animation to start as well. So we can set the animation mode to be equal to shoot. And as soon as the attack is done, after here the rate of fire has um, um, expired. And I've changed this to 0.4 by the way to make sure that it's in line with the four frames I do every 0.1 seconds. But you can change the animation as well by lengthening the animation in the animation player. That's up to you. We can say that the animation mode needs to go back to idle. Now, of course, if the player or the enemy needs to continuously shoot, he will just have one frame or even a split second uh, where idle will be active. Um, but this will be invisible for the player and the animation of shoot will just continuously run. Now, with that done, we can upgrade this with an if statement. And I've prepared that for us, so bear with me. First, what we do is we verify if the animation mode is shoot. And if that is true, we take the fire direction instead of the move direction to determine the uh, degrees with which we are um, firing and where we're firing projectiles to. Um, and we set the animation direction accordingly. Else, if the animation mode is walk, we do this whole piece that we had previously already just a moment ago. That way, with the animation mode and the proper animation direction set, we get the right animation push to our animation player. Now, if you're wondering where this fire direction comes from, this is actually from our previous episode, the first episode in this series, where we set the fire direction as already the angle towards the player position. And we needed that to push towards the skill instance that we're creating so we can rotate the projectile in the right direction. So we're basically reusing a uh, variable that we had already defined previously. Now, with all of this done, we can demonstrate that when we approach our enemies, they start firing at us. If we were to walk around our enemies here, you can see that they change their fire direction. They, they rotate towards us. Projectiles are going the right way. They walk towards us if they're looking for us. And if I were to, for example, hide behind this wall right here, you can see they're walking in that direction. So with that done, our enemies are animated both for their attack and their walking sequence. And that makes the game feel a lot better than it did before. Now, before I close out this tutorial, there's one thing we need to take a look at. Right now, the enemies that are firing at me, and I figured out that if I kill one of these, or if I kill both of them, uh, in this case, 
one of them died. The, the health bar is gone, but they continue firing at us. So the state machine doesn't handle their dev state appropriately. So to fix that right here on the start of the state machine, I'm going to be adding in these three lines of code that is going to verify whether George or uh, William, the enemies are dead. And if so, you're just going to pass, it's just going to pass on the function, it's not going to execute anything. And if that is not the case, that means they're still alive, then they can run the state machine with the proper indentum there. Now, when I play the game with those three extra lines of code added, and if I were to quickly kill them with this Nova skill, you can see that they properly run their death animations, they stop shooting, and they're no longer part of the game world. Now, with that done, we have a properly working animation sequence, and I'll let you guys go on to your own game development. That was it guys, I hope you like it and if you did, smash that like button, hit subscribe, don't forget that little bell icon because in the next episode we're going to make sure that George remembers his starting position and that he returns to that starting position the moment he cannot find the player after the search sequence was done. Now with that coming up you don't want to miss out so until then keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you guys.